Hello. So in my last video, um, heat maps using Matplotlib, Seaborn, and Pandas, one of my you one of my subscribers asked me, uh, Michael, how can you display the same data as a 3D scatter with the fourth variable energy mapped to color? And in, in addition, how can you interact with the graph, zoom, rotate, etc.? So in this video, I'll be answering how do you make it a 3D scatter? And this is just an update to this video. So if you haven't seen the first video, please do, because we'll go over um, the basics of heat maps using Matplotlib and Seaborn. In the previous video, it was pretty apparent that Seaborn worked a lot better than Matplotlib, at least for what I was working on. So next, we're going to go into subplotting and 3D heat maps using Matplotlib and Seaborn. So the original premise of the video was to do the 3D heat maps. But in the end, I kind of just preferred subplotting, um, plotting multiple plots next to each other versus just a 3D heat map. And you'll see why soon. So it's the same thing as before, where you just basically uh, read in your data from the CSV file. And this is biological data, uh, helix parameters. Um, I think this is DNA. It could be something else. Um, over here, we're just seeing what the data, the columns are in this file. So if you're not familiar, this is just selecting uh, certain columns you want to study. Um, as before, we're choosing helix 1 phase, helix 2 phase, helix 3 phase, and energy. So over here, what we're showing is that you can use a group by, where basically you just want to find um, the average at each unique combination of um, energy, of helix phases for energy and just the same sort of stuff as before. So what the commenter, I think Sanduja, was asking is how do you make a 3D heat map? So I haven't found a way to do this in Seaborn, but the best I could find so far in Matplotlib was this. So while she wants something interactive, Matplotlib and Seaborn is frankly not the best solution. I would probably recommend uh, Probably something different than Python, or maybe something like Boca, where you can interact with your graph in Python, or if you want to be adventurous, uh, try d3.js. So the first thing to do if you want to make a 3D heat map in Python is first you're going to basically make a figure, add a subplot, uh, a subplot just so you can basically play with the graph. And it's the same sort of stuff as before. Um, in fact, this part over here isn't necessary unless you want a color bar, which in my case I, I do because I, I find it useful. So it's basically the same as before. You have your subplot and you're doing a 3D scatter where you have your three columns, your helix phases, and then your fourth column, I think Sanduja wanted um, do, 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 do. Uh, fourth variable being energy mapped to color. So if you look over here, we have our um, fourth variable uh, mapped to color. And we basically just set our labels and we plot our graph or our heat map. So while this is pretty, I don't know if it's that useful. And I found someone's blog where it basically shows you can rotate your graph, which is useful. But what I think is kind of a better solution, at least for right now, would be to do the same sort of stuff where you basically find every unique combination using the group by, and or the average of every unique combination using the group by and the mean, and basically showing the plots next to each other. So I think this is a better solution because you can see how helix 1 phase compares to helix 2 phase, helix 1 phase compares to helix 3 phase, etc. You can also do uh, different aggregate functions like min. You might find uh, the minimum energy is more useful or max or whatever you like. Um, I hope this answers your questions. If you guys have more, please don't hesitate to ask. And remember to please subscribe.